Hello and welcome to another video show from This Is Anfield and the Leap Challenge. Me, Gareth Roberts, him, Paul Cope. Following up from our show on Monday, where we talked about all things Liverpool life in, in our show Live at Five, which will be out there every Monday at five o'clock. This one's a bit more, we're, we're, we're going to take our time on this one, a bit more of a considered topic. Uh, and we thought we'd kick off with a bit of a sort of getting to know you type theme and we're calling it the first time don't get excited it's about football um it's not liverpool of course but there's a quote that i absolutely love and it's from the late great sir bobby robson the quote is this what is a club in any case not the buildings or the directors or the people who are paid to represent it it's not the television contracts the get out clauses marketing departments or executive boxes it's the noise, the passion, the feeling of belonging, the pride in your city. It's a small boy clambering up stadium steps for the very first time, gripping his father's hand, gawping at the hallowed stretch of turf beneath and without being able to do a thing about it, falling in love. So that's what we're going to talk about. When did we first fall in love with Liverpool Football Club? What was what was the first time? What was the first game? First kit? We're going to talk about firsts. So what what, what do you remember about your first game? Because you you were incredibly young when you went to your first game, weren't you? Yeah. Well, it was funny when we were talking about this the other week, and you said you could remember your first game, and I was like, Can you? Because I was old. But you were all well older than <laughs> yeah. me. Because like, I so I. I I went first, went to the game when I was like three or four. Wow. My dad, but this is the interesting thing about it. Like it just shows how much time has changed since then. So that's literally 40 years ago. And my dad used to just, my dad had a season ticket in the car, in the paddock that he went to. He sat with my granddad on like row seven of the paddock, halfway line, boss seats. And he used to just take me in and sit me on his knee. And he used to just say to the fella on the turnstile, oh, he's me, it's me son, he's me lucky mascot. And it, that I remember, it's funny because I don't remember the first game and I don't remember like any, anything about the match back then because I was too young. But I do remember that feeling. Like it's funny you say about the, the Bobby Robson quotes because I do remember that feeling. And I remember the feeling of going into Anfield and seeing the crowd and hearing that noise. Like there's, there's nothing quite like walking into a full football stadium and hearing that noise. You don't get mm. it anywhere else. And seeing the pitch and like there's not it's weird that romance is still i still feel that like the grass was like a different color green than you'd yeah, ever yeah, seen yeah. and it was dead a, green I've, I've, yeah. honestly i still even as an older lad when i when i'd go to the game i used to get to a point where i'd wait until you'll never walk alone was playing to come up the steps because like, in my head it was always for me you know I mean? <laughs> like i'm coming out and walking out to, it was the closest when you're a kid it's like in your head, like I'm coming to Anfield. It's it's unbelievable. I said to you, like in the notes before this, it felt like going into the Colosseum or something like that. But even the fact, I remember the feeling of going in through the turnstiles, and everyone just being like, "Oh, hello, mate!" Like you know, you're you're your dad's lucky mascot. Isn't that a great thing? And imagine if you just rocked up at the match now with a, like a three year old, and went, "He's me lucky mascot. He's going to sit on me knee." They'd be like. He can't come in. Yeah, I know. And that's the sad it's thing. A world of, it's, yeah, changed, it's a world of differences, isn't it? I mean, you know, I, I I was 14 when I first went and it was like a a, a huge build-up to me going, a really frustrating build-up to me going to my first ever game because I was desperate to go. And yet I always say it, I, I felt like I was the only lad growing up on Merseyside who, whose dad wasn't into football. Yeah. So I don't get to climb those step, steps holding me dad's hand or whatever, like Bobby Robson says. My dad had no interest in it whatsoever. Me mum neither. And in fact, the pair of them used to look at football in a bit of a disparaging manner at the time. And, I, you know, they thought it was for hooligans. Oh, they thought, really? Yeah, they thought it was not not like, you know, everyone who goes is a hooligan, more there is trouble at football games and we don't want our son getting involved in it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they didn't know, they didn't go. Yeah. You know, they weren't particularly even mates with, with, with anyone who did. So they didn't know about it. And, and don't get me wrong, it was a little bit of a different world then. And there was a bit of, you know, naughtiness that went on and the stadiums weren't anywhere near as, as safe as an environment as they are now. We, yeah. we can't always over-romanticise it all. But, you know, for, for me, 
I could just like when I I eventually decided I was going anyway. You know, so how did like, you get into it then? If your dad, did, if he wasn't through your dad, what was it? Mates in school? Yeah, or? just mates in school and sort of you know I can remember like watching games on a a black and white portable in in, in the in the spare you know in the back room if you like because it wasn't wasn't allowed to be on the big telly because my mum and dad didn't want to watch it. So you know I can remember watching like Heisel. On, mm-hmm. on a on a black and white portable on my own in the back room because I was interested in it, but they weren't. And um, so, yeah, it, it was a long time coming when I eventually got to a game. I admired loads of other people's dads. You know, I, I, there was even like people in the family who had never met you, who I was only sort of distantly related to. I heard that some of them went to the game and I was like, why can't I go with them? Do you know what I mean? And people from school went and like, you know, they, their mums and dads let them go. And I, I just got to a point where I thought, that I'm just going to go. I'm just going to say I'm doing something else to my mum and dad, and I'm just going to go. And that was what I did in the end, you know. And I went, the first ever game I went to, 1991, Kenny Dalglish is the manager, Crew Alexandra in the League Cup. Well, it was the Rumbelows Cup then, though. Yeah. And, and I put this, I stuck this down in the notes because um, the Rumbelows Cup, I don't know what age everyone watching is going to be. So I'm just going to quickly run through. So it was the Rumbelows Cup when I started going, but it's also known as Football League Cup, Mill Cup, Littlewoods Cup, uh, Coca-Cola Cup, Worthington Cup, Carling Cup, Capital One Cup, EFL Cup, and now, of course, but, Carabao Cup. Do you know what's funny as you say that, though? Like, I remember, because I think footy fans... I've, this is the first time I've ever thought of this. Whoever sponsors, think about how much they spend to sponsor this cup, the League Cup. I think we're always a couple of names behind. Oh, like, yeah. So when it's I like started going the game... To, yeah, whatever my, my, one resonates with you. Yeah, my granddad called it the Milk Cup. So I always, growing up, I called it the Milk Cup. But when I, I'm the same. So when I had the first been aware of it, it was either the Littlewoods Cup or the Rumblows Cup. But we, I just called it the Milk Cup. Because that's what it was when I was grow- I was a, kid, a little kid, do you know what I mean? Or oh, my granddad called it that when I was a little kid. And then, because, I don't know, yeah, when, when it was the Coca-Cola Cup. But and I, then I think for years now, I, I don't ever remember calling it the Capital One Cup. It was the no, Carling Cup for a few years. I never got involved with that. Um, but but what I remember about this as well is, you know, like where, where I grew up, you know, you could, when, when Liverpool were at home, if you went and stood on, like, for those that know how, you, <laughs> if you went and stood up by the Blue Bell, you know, you, or or when for even further up to, towards like Prescott ways, you could see the lights from from Anfield. Do you mm. know what I mean? And it always felt like this far away promised land where I would never go because I couldn't get to these games. And so when I was going up, go to the, walking up to the game, and I saw the ground, and you know, all all the sort of like the sights and sounds from that first time still quite vivid for me you know what I mean I can sort of like smell the onions I can remember a fella you know because you had those old hot dog vans then yeah. you know like like a little push along my one. dad had never let do you know what no, that, all no, I we, remember we always is, had a thing that it, me and my mates had this we always used to say where does he go the bog that's all me, oh my dad had, oh, that's it, what you just triggered a memory my dad had just always got because I'd go to him on a hot dog and he goes to me where does he wash his hands yeah and I'd be like, where does he go the bar? I'm not asked. In the onions. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. And, and, you know, like there was the, I remember the golden goal seller. I remember climbing, the, goal, climbing yeah. the steps. 50p. Yeah, golden goal. Uh, <laughs> climbing the steps to the car. And, and, and the first time, like you said, and, and like Bobby Robson says so well in that quote, the first time you see the pitch, and it was a night game for me, this as well, remember? So it was floodlit as well, oh, which makes it even dreamy, more like yeah. vivid. Yeah. And it was just like, wow. And like, I just remember like, you know, like the warming up before and because we've got there Andy to like get a good spec. Mm. We were all like, by the way, there was only 17,000 there this night because crew were bottom under the old division three. So it was obviously seen as not like, you know, a big deal basically. But Liverpool had like, you know, a strong side out like, and, and you know, that's the first thing I remember about getting in there. I just paid him, by the way. There's no like burner phones, internet, yeah, But we said him, we, that's, I think we've created this myth around Liverpool that it's always been the way it is now and no. you couldn't get a ticket. That's not that long ago. No. And there was only 17,000 people there for a game no. and you could just walk in on the night. 1991. Well, um, I, I remember as well just seeing like, you know, all these people that like, you know, were my heroes, if you like, and that I'd read about in magazines and watched on the telly and had posters on my wall and all that. And like, there they are on the yeah. pitch. And it was just sort of like, wow, do you know what I mean? Like, Brucey's there, Barnes is there, Rush is there, Beardsley's there. 
And I, <laughs> Joe, it's funny, like thinking about that team because that's that's the team as you look through that, like, yeah, that's that's the team I remember, like as a kid. They all seem like. Do you know, when you think about footballers now? They all seem like kids, and maybe this is because we're getting old. But <laughs> that team just seemed like it was old. Quite fellas, an old, yeah, it was quite an old it? side. Like wasn't Bruce it? Grobler looked like he was about fifty. It was an average age of about twenty-eight. That's art. But it, but um, even but they looked older. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, hundred percent like muzzies yeah, and all that kind like of thing. Like old fellas on. playing footy. Well, I've got um, I've I've still got my program uh, from this particular game. So, twenty fifth of September, nineteen ninety. I said nineteen one before. Um, Rumbelow's League Cup, second round, first leg. I always remember that um, for those watching, in case you see that. Hopefully, um, I always remember about this getting in there, getting this program, and it says on the front, you know, Liverpool champions of the football league, and like. You know, so I was basically going the season after. I started going the season after they'd, they'd won the league, do you know what I mean? The last one. So they won the league in like 89, 90. Yeah. And this is 90, 91 season. Yeah. So every one of those seasons that they didn't win the league for, I've been you a Liverpool there. fan yeah. going to games. And it it's is. like, and I, I used to always say that, you know, like on stuff, I, I don't, you know, be talking about it and be saying like, I feel like, you know what? Is it me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then, it, and then, even when we do win it, I'm not there because it's COVID. So we still need to go and win it again. Um, but I, lo I love looking through, like you know, or, or watching footage of this period, or looking through programs because it's just sort of like it's you know, it, it's a completely different world. How, how football's covered, the sponsors, the advert, even the ground itself. You know, like it's the Kemlin Road, it's a one-tiered um, Anfield Road, yeah. it's the old Standing Cop, yeah. you know, and all this kind of stuff. And like you know, Rob Jones, Rob Jones was playing for Crew that night. Yeah. Uh, Craig Hignett was playing for crew well, that night. And there, there you go, little segue to, like ties in. So Rob Jones was the first because in our it was our in during our generation you could get names on the back of your shirt. You didn't yeah. couldn't do that, could you? Rob Jones. I was I was a right back in school, so Rob Jones was my first name on the back of my shirt. Really? Yeah. Isn't that so? That was mad that he was playing for crew that so night. That was, your, that was a first for you then. Here yeah. you go, Liverpool first. Um, well, that game as well, you know, I sort of went to it thinking, you know, our, we've got a great side, you know, we're champions and all the rest of it. You know, it's going to be a cracker. It crew turned us round first off. So, you know, like we're not we're not kicking into the cop second half, it's first half. And they take they took the lead. And it was like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, this bottom of bottom of division three side turned up at Liverpool. They're knocking it round, they're doing all right. They take the lead. Then Barnes has a as a penalty saved in this game as well. Dean Dean Grey Goose there, keeper, pulled off like some really good saves that game. But isn't but, that funny as well? Like I think rose tinted glasses and like uncles and dads generations talking about old footy. They almost gave the impression that like that never happened. That never happened. Yeah. Oh, John Barnes never you, missed a pen. Oh, you wouldn't Liverpool get that never back went in the day. Yeah, never, know, yeah. Like there'd have been old fellas. I know. I mean, we're old fellas now, but there'd been older fellas than us watching Liverpool at the weekend as we record this. And as we go down one nil down to Bournemouth, going, this didn't happen back in the seventies. And you're like, it did though, didn't it? Did it? literally happen? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the first goal I've seen as well, sort of from the cop inside Anfield, not just on the telly, is Steve McMahon, and like there was like a bit of a. There was a bit of a scramble, I seem to remember. It comes out to him, edge of the box, about 20, 25 yards, and he, he volleys it in. Like, And I, I can remember that, and I can remember going mad and you know, giving it beans in the cop for the first time and being made up that I could do so. Uh, and it ends up it ends up being 5-1 on the night. You know, It's fairly comfortable in the end and all the rest of it. Even, uh, we were talking on another show, weren't we, about sort of, you know, what, what the players say to media and stuff like that yeah. now compared to then. I was I was reading some match reports from this game and it made me laugh because there was a quote from uh, Glenn Hussein saying, um, you know, that he must have been asked, like, you know, do you think the tie's over? Because it was two legged then, even at that early stage of the okay, competition. Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, look, we, we've got a four goal advantage. Like, you know, if we go to crew and like somehow manage to not go through in the competition, we shouldn't be footballers. And I thought he wouldn't say that now. No, he definitely wouldn't Imagine say that, that now. No, absolutely no not. Um, but yeah, um, what I mean, can you remember a first goal? Have you got a first goal that sort of resonates with you? Is there is that you know anything that <laughs> well, jumps out? Like I think that? I said we've we've talked in the past and we about our memories, and it's yeah, mad that like my terrible. my <laughs> but and typical of my like memory, like being a, just a bit of a bastard to me. My the, my first actual memories of Liverpool are the. 
game when Michael Thomas scored the winner to like we lost the league at Anfield. So I was, I was nine then. So I remember that. I do remember that goal, and I, I remember Jeremy Goss's goal to oh, like yeah. like with the last game of you the Stanley Cup. It was a great goal, yeah. but I'd like. Why does my brain decide to remember them and none of like, how many John Barnes goals did I see or Ian Rush goals? Yeah. And I don't remember any of them. But I do remember like to go into like the first, the ways. I was just looking that up quickly then because I said to you before we did it, like when we were looking, preparing for this, I was trying to remember what my first away was. And I, I do remember quite well going to see us play Middlesbrough away when it was 3-3 and Ravinelli scored oh, the hat trick. Yeah. That was, but that was 96, 97. And I was just looking then because we signed Collymore in 95, 96, but I don't, so I, the other one I, I remember vividly because I felt like I was the only, but do you remember when we used to play Blackburn away and you'd get the whole end? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. everyone could go and it was a great away day Yeah, because it wasn't that far away, far enough to have a good laugh, have a bevy, there was pubs and all that and you took the whole end so it was great and do you remember the goal he scored where he, he scuffed it from about 25 yards out and it was Tim Flowers in goal oh, and yeah, Tim Flowers and went like down to collect went it. Over a divot. it hit a divot and went yeah, over his yeah, shoulder yeah, yeah. so as he hit the shot it was like the whole end sat down but you know, as they were sitting down our end sat down they're all looking at the floor and I remember I don't know why I just carried on watching and I like saw it go over his Flowers and started celebrating and everyone's like what are you celebrating I went it's gone in and you know, everyone's like that's Ow. Kind of, how is that yeah. gone in but so that might have been that might be the first away goal I remember. But it was either that or the the um, the three three because I remember Bjornaby, I remember Stig Bjornaby playing yeah. left back. He scored in that three three away at uh, uh, Middlesbrough in the cream kit. So yeah, that, what about yours? Have you got have you got a a goal? An away or a goal? I went away uh, for away. I was trying to work out what the first away was, and I I think it was probably Sheffield Wednesday because. For obvious reasons, that wasn't like a popular away with a, with a lot of Liverpool fans. And the only reason I went was because of that university there. I was actually skimmed for years, to be honest. I mean, you know, like even like cup finals and stuff like that. You know, there was a couple of cup finals that I would have loved to have gone to. But, the, you know, just the fact that, you know, I, when I finished school, I went and did A-levels. And then after A-levels, I was into university. And I never had a great deal of money all through those times. So it was, it was more difficult for me. I think where you know, it all started to take off for me in terms of like properly following the Reds, if you want to call it that, was when, um, well, 2001. So, you know, um, two, 92 and, and the FA Cup 92, League Cup 95, I just couldn't have got to those money-wise or, or anything else. So, but 2000, 2001, I was sort of 24, 25, working, independent, didn't have to listen to my mum and dad anymore. Not like I did anyway, but you know what I mean? Um, and that was when I did, you know, so I did all the, of those cup finals. I was at Barcelona, you know, I went to the, the final against Alaves the UEFA Cup, Birmingham in the League Cup uh, and Arsenal in the FA Cup. But that Birmingham game, you know, like we were obviously expected to win that way, you know what I mean? Because they were league below, weren't they? Yeah. Ends up going to penalties. Fowler scored a great goal, didn't he? Um, I remember like proper chewing my fingers over like Carragher's um, penalty. And then he, he absolutely wallops I it. I can still picture that. Bit. I remember him going up with his like socks rolled down. Yeah. And I remember the whole end, the whole end was like, fucking. Yeah, I know. All looking at each other. But yeah. you, don't, you didn't want to sort of say it out loud because yeah. you like, don't want to put him off. And you're like, fucking hell, why is Carragher taking one and just pinged it into the I top know, corner? It was a beauty. It was an absolute beauty. But I remember that. Like, so that's like the, that's the first trophy that, I, that I've been present for. Do you know what I mean? That I've seen Liverpool lift it sort of in the flesh. Yeah. And then the rest of that season was just a fantastic journey. Obviously, you know, the Arsenal game is absolutely legendary. Um, we get battered. Um, Hencho puts his goalie gloves on and all the rest of it. And Michael Owen sort of, you know, pulls it out the out the bag. And for all that's going on with Owen since and all the rest of it, I do feel like there's, a, you know, and I've been one to perpetuate it, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm not into the fact he did what he did. Yeah. And I thought less of him that he did. But equally, there's a younger Gareth, another Gareth, that says that memory from that season, brilliant. Do you know what I mean? And those goals, superb, unbelievable. Well, he says as um, well, that's his greatest football memory, yeah, isn't it? That it was day. unbelievable. But imagine to... being him at that age, like scoring. Because I remember as well, we got battered, didn't we? Yeah, Arsenal absolutely battered us that battered, day. Yeah. And we had, that was the hench off Boiling the line. Not. It was in Cardiff, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, I, I had a photograph um, because I was working for like, you know, the Echoes, like newspapers, if you like. I wasn't working directly for the Echoes. I was working for weeklies, I think, around that time. 
But, you know, I knew some of the photographers, knew some of the people working on the picture desk, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd just be like, you know, can you get me a little uh, little print of, you know, like a, one of the pictures from that fan? There's one that I love. And it was basically like, it was our one with this, like, with, with the others, like other players flanking them, think yeah. Heskies, whatever. Like with a big incredulous face, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. The great folks are and I had that on my living room wall for years because it was just like what a memory it was, what a moment it was. Celebrations were brilliant. Um, Cardiff was a superb place for for cup finals, so just, much better than Wembley. Just made for us as well, wasn't yeah. it? That like that era was just brilliant to yeah. me because that they were they're my first memories of winning as well, of, of winning a tro trophy and being there because that was the first one I'd been to and. I, I can still, because I went to the League Cup final with my mate and then I went to the FA Cup final with my dad. And so different experiences, because obviously when you're with your mate, you can go out and get pissed and that. And my dad wasn't into all that. But um, I just remember like being on the streets and you know, the atmosphere just being unbelievable. And you, you were in Cardiff City Centre having a great time. And then the stadium was just there, like just right by, right in the city centre. It was just unbelievable and, great, and, and I do remember like because we because we went, went through such a purple patch for getting to finals I remember after a couple of them like the, the fella on the loudspeaker you know, like they're, they're meant to be neutral and he, I can't remember what final this was and who we were playing but he was like you know like welcome to the whoever we were playing Arsenal fans whatever and then it, when he, he was did all like the formalities with them and then he came like came to our end like and he was like, "I'm welcome back to Cardiff to the Liverpool supporters. It's great to have you back." And it was like they loved us being there as yeah. well. It was just, it was it, such a good era that, like, yeah, there was like it. it felt like it was we were sort of like kindred spirits a little bit with the Welsh, like, and all yeah. that. You know what I mean? And it, it was it was a brilliant area. It was a brilliant. It was a brilliant year to be a red. Brilliant season to be a red. And then it was sort of topped off, wasn't it, as well by the fact that. You know, we qualified for the Champions League as well. You know, there's the win over Charlton, I think, on the last day. Yeah. You know, Fowler scores that brilliant the goal where he sort of hooks it over his head, doesn't yeah. he? And yeah, absolutely superb times. Well, I wanted to sort of move to, to a different era and talk about the first time that we sort of had any experience of Jürgen Klopp. And um, there's a couple of moments for me, obviously fortunate enough to interview him. But before before that as well, there was his first press conference. And I remember going to that, being there for that at Anfield. And oh, were you actually in the press conference? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, my, my, uh, you know, I, I'd managed to get in there and we're all sitting there and there's, there's media from sort of all over the world and all this. And like, do you remember the sort of the build up to, to, to us getting them? Or, or even when we got them, the build up to us seeing them, if you like. And we've been told this big mad story of a mad fella who was sort of rock and roll and where's this rucksack and had all, you know the, jumps into the crowd and you know yeah. what I mean and like goes absolutely wild and all this and he was sort of like he was pitched that way and you were thinking like you know what what's he gonna do like is he gonna do something mad in this press conference is he gonna like you know like I, I was just looking at a piece I wrote on the on the day where Simon Hughes who's now at the Athletic he'd he'd nudged me and said you know, do you think he'd be the first manager to come into a football press conference to heavy metal music? Because there was this big thing yeah, yeah, around him, thing, wasn't there? Yeah. But what I remember about when he did come in, you know, like, was he going to do something mad? But he did come in, he was just had, like, you just heard this laugh, you know, first of all. So we're all sitting there staring at a table, basically, waiting for him to come in and sit at said table. And he just heard this big booming Jürgen Klopp laugh. Then he comes in and he's absolutely massive, dead tall, you know what I mean? I remember he looked like tanned, healthy, big, massive smile. And he comes in, sits there and like, you know, he obviously drops some absolute gold, doesn't he? In that very first press conference, the normal one and all that kind of stuff. I remember him saying in, in one of like the breakouts as well, um, he's close to quite staying with some of the some of the reporters, which I liked because I thought, you know, you're not going to take any shit, are you? Yeah. He said something like, you know, don't make me out to be something I'm not. You know, don't say I'm a god because I can't walk on water or something like that, he said. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, brilliant, because, you know, okay, they're a coach first and foremost, or, you know, there's someone who's contributing to your buying players, but you've got to be able to, ham in the modern day, you've got to be able to handle that media yeah, side. Definitely. And he absolutely owned it, didn't he, from, yeah. from day one. What do you remember about him, that those very early Well, do you know, early you know what's times? funny? As, as I've started picturing that that press conference again and, like, that, that excitement of us getting him, because... You, you think back and it's easy to forget now, isn't it? Because of everything he's done and we we know now what he achieved. And 
Um, and he's still there, obviously. But something I've always said about Liverpool Football Club and its managers, like I always use Rafa as an example of this. If you forget or you're too young to remember, go back and look at a picture of Rafa Benitez when oh, he became our manager. Yeah. And then have a look at what he looked like when he left. And look at that through all of our managers over the years, what it does to you. And it's the first time I've realised we've done it to Klopp as well. Like if you look at Klopp now compared to what he looked like when he came in, he was fresh faced. He was yeah. enthusiastic. He, that laugh, that booming laugh. Think about how little of that version of him we see now. We, it's still there. You do still see it, but there, it is more of a worn it's down, more of a stress, like stressed. Fella. Like yeah, 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 he, yeah. he comes into he he bounced into those press conferences like I'm going to control this, but I'm dead funny. I'll tell you off, but I'll make you laugh. Now you can tell he sort of comes into press conferences and I like want to knock everyone out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm sick yeah, of yeah. this. But he, Which he, I get. Like, he, he I haven't done it for like, years. He hinted at some of that, though, didn't he? If you think back as well, in in that first press conference, he did say things like he didn't, he did, you know, he didn't get the circus around it. He sort of didn't understand, did he? Why can't he just go for a pint and things yeah. like that? And you know, but that what, was a that, I remember that story. Like, I, do you remember like the, 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 it was the Hope Street Hotel, wasn't it? And, and, and like you know, there were, I think it was like people taking pictures through like bathroom windows yeah. or some well, kind of madness. He went for a pint and he was like, in town. What's that? Yeah, because he was like oh, in Dortmund. I used to just do that. Just yeah. go for a, so he was like, I'm going to go out in town. He did it once. And then he was like, I can't do that again. I know. And, well, the, and the funny thing is, because my memory is, and I've never met him, but I lived in Formby at the time and he moved to Formby. Yeah. So I literally lived like, I, it's like one of them where you, Joe, you, you like watching Carl, Carl Pilkington, where you live in the whole, looking at the like the, the great houses. Like I did not live on Millionaire Row in, in yeah, Formby, to be clear. Say. But I was <laughs> like, I was a few streets away from where it is, Victoria yeah. Road. So it was like, Joe, I'd walk down there to go to the train station and, he, he, he was known to like walk his dog and all that. And I had a dog. And I remember every time I walked my dog, I was like, might bump into Jürgen. Yeah, might bump Jürgen? into Jürgen. And I, I, I was constantly thinking, find out what his dog looks like. Do you know what I mean? Because if my dog befriends his dog when his dog's out with his like <laughs> son, then one day, like my dog will be like, oh, there's his dog. And I'll be like, all right, Jürgen. And it just never happened. Never happened. All the time. I, I like, mean, he obviously still did want the pint because if, if you look at when he went to, you know, when the Reds were in Singapore in the summer, he went for a pint with with like some yeah. of the, you know, the Anfield rap lads and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, you know, he obviously did want to still do the pint thing. I mean, when I first, when I first interviewed him, I was a little, you know, you're a little bit daunted. It's Jürgen Klopp. Of course, of course yeah. you are, do you know what I mean? And like he bounced into the room and what was brilliant about him was he, he didn't treat us, I didn't think at any point, the way he would have treated maybe media. So the way I'd seen him, so me being in that first press conference, the way he was with very much some of the media I felt. I felt like when he was with the general media, the world media, you know, when he first walked in, he was all very like kind and smiley and stuff like that. But, but I thought, you know, with the others, he was a bit harder and he was saying things like, you know, what was the quote? I, I saw that when you were talking before, I was going to read out. He said something like, um, don't ask me daft questions. You won't, don't ask silly questions. You won't get silly answers was one of the things yeah. he said. You know, so that's like sort of, you know, I'm stamping my ground here. And I thought like, is he going to walk in when I interview him and say, and don't same. ask silly questions. You won't get silly answers. No, he, he just walked in and he was like dead, dead relaxed, like shaking hands and like, you know, sort of making you feel like really. And then, and then there was no guidance from anyone. You know, like I, I think some people look at these things sometimes and think like it's all choreographed, stage managed. You know, you won't ask this and you won't ask that and blah, 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 where all these mad conspiracy theories come from. There was none of that. We could have asked them anything. And, we, and you know, we handled it the best way we could. One, through being a little bit giddy that it was Jürgen Klopp. Two, thinking he might shout at us if we said, you know, the, the, those, uh, and three, a level of respect and wanting to get back in that room again one day. Yeah. But he was absolutely brilliant. And, I, you know, and I remember him saying things like, you know, there was a, 
what was that game? It was, it was Burnley, wasn't it? Was it like New Year's Eve or New Year's Day or something like that? And, and it was it was a horrible game. And we got a last minute, did we get a last minute equaliser or last minute win? Can't remember now. Uh, was it Clavin or Lovren or a combination of the two? It doesn't really matter anyway. My point is that when this game got mentioned, it was just like Burnley fucking, you know what I mean? Oh, and it, yeah, you know I know what, what one you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. It was it was Lovren onto Clavin, I think. Yeah. And it was a 2 1 win. That was it. And it was like, and yeah, because I remember him saying, it was his favourite game. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah. you know, and we just sort of naturally arrived at that. It was a dead natural conversation. He was, you know, he was a, he was a, a warm fella, a nice fella. And there was none of that harder man that, you know, he obviously felt he had to be with, with certain members of the well, press. Well, what's interesting though, it ties into something we mentioned on the live show, which is, and I, it's funny that, that he was clearly, and no wonder it wears you down after all, because it would do me. Like he's coming to his first press conference saying to the press, don't ask me silly questions. And six years later, well, however many years it is now, what is it? Eight? I don't know. However many years later, he's like, stop asking me silly questions. Yeah. Because you're doing me head in. And he's like, but where he's gone, when he meets fan media, he knows you're not just after a headline. You just want to chat to him. Yeah. And, and tell a story. Find out something and, different. And, yeah. Which I, <laughs> I, which I, I think I've makes... that with him loads of times, to be honest, because, you know, there were other moments where, you know, I got into press conferences or got, got to ask him a question or there were other, you know, times where, you know, we, we did interviews with him. And it was like he appreciated being able to have a chat about footy where it wasn't daft. Like I remember, I think it was in Hong Kong and at the time we still had Coutinho, but he was being heavily linked with, with a move away. And it was like every single press conference, Coutinho, 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 Coutinho. And he was literally like, don't ask me about Coutinho. And then the first question was about Coutinho. And obviously the journalist's argument is, I've got the desk saying to me, ask about Coutinho. Yeah. So I've got to ask, whether you want me to or not, I've got to ask it. We've got to be seen on camera saying, what about Coutinho? And so we asked about Coutinho. It, I remember there being some really bizarre question as well, where Coutinho was compared to butter or margarine or some wildness. Well, that maybe that was Klopp's answer. But anyway, my point was that, so the mainstream done that, he wasn't happy because he said, I don't want you to ask me about that. And then I said, because it was pre-season, because I've, I've always wondered this. I said, you know, you're the manager, you've got this squad, you, 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 you come, flew up to the other side of the world, you're trying to prepare them for a Premier League season, you want to win the Premier League. What do you say to the players in terms of how hard or not how hard they go in a game? How do you, you know, what do you get them to do? Mm -hmm. Does that happen naturally? Do you say to them, give 80%? Do you say to them, pull out of a tackle, which people always say not to do because you can get injured more by trying to do that? Do you know what I mean? And like, I, I sort of, you know, explained why I wanted to know it and said, you know, from a football fan point of view, I think it's, it's intriguing to know you know, the difference between a real game and a friendly, a, a game abroad, a game at home, but, you know, where are they in the prep? How do you, and, and like, he gave this really detailed answer, but like with a big smile on his face, like he was dead happy talking about yeah. an interesting aspect of his job and not just, what about Coutinho? Yeah. What about Coutinho? But, it, but isn't it funny? Like, and I think this is where, and again, because we live in a modern world now where fan media is this big thing, people forget it didn't exist. And I reckon for people like Klopp and players over the years, it's actually been refreshing because you're being asked questions by people who are genuinely interested yeah. in hearing more about what you do for your job that they like watching instead of like what's going on with the transfer, what's going on with this thing that you're not interested in. And like, you're like, that's just admin to me. I'm not bothered. So you can see how over the years there has like, they've developed an affinity to mm. fan media because it's like, yeah, Sam, that's a nice one for asking questions. We, like, you see him do it now, don't you? Like, you will see, and as you say, they've all got a job to do and all the usual caveats and blah, blah, bullshit. But you'll see, like, Joe, the first three questions of a press conference will be nonsense. Like, but something it's around it. by Sky, isn't it? Yeah, it, start, it starts no, with Vinny. Vinny. Yeah. And, then, and then he'll get to the point where he goes, right, so anyway... Um, let's talk about the game on Saturday. And the number of times Klopp goes, oh yeah, want to talk about the game, do you? Yeah, sound, like, yeah. Sound. There's a game of footy to talk about, is there? Sound. And you're like, 
you can see how it just annoys him every time. I, I actually think it's it, it's a credit to the club. And look, I know, like I said before, there are varying views on it, conspiracy theories even and things like that. But I think it's a credit to the club that, that, that they have embraced fan media to an extent as much as they can do. There are rules and regulations behind the scenes, which mean that, that even if fan media wanted to be as close to the club as some people think they are, they can't anyway because of the Premier League's rules mm. and regulations. But away from the Premier League, you know, you've got a bit more of an opportunity. Like, you know, I, I, we interviewed um, Brendan, Brendan Rogers in Australia. And I think there was a little bit of a thing where the club were like, Oh, wow, they've come all the way to Australia. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they're doing a live show and they've asked if there's any possibility to speak to the manager. Well, do you know what? Go on then. Down, yeah. And like, you know, and I think it was a bit of a test that to see, well, how do you treat that? What are you going to ask them? Are you going to be respectful? And we wear all of those things, you know what I mean? And we had a bit of a laugh with them. Remember um, at the time, it was still a, a thing on the podcast to sort of ask an opening question. Um, oh, and, yeah. and the opening question was sort of like, what's your fa your favourite first song on an album? And, you know, everyone was like, I think my, I think I said like Stone Roses or whatever. And, and you know, everyone's throwing in these like fairly cool answers or whatever, you know, well well aware that everyone's going to be watching and listening. And Brendan said, <laughs> Brendan said Keen. And it was like, <laughs> wow, yeah. Keen, you're going to get slaughtered gonna, for that, yeah, mate. Get stick for that And one. so it proved. Um yeah, nice. well, should we leave it there? Yeah, uh, that. that's been a uh, Liverpool first. But on this other show, uh, which is in conjunction with uh, the Amf uh, this is Anfield, <sighs> nearly got that wrong. Uh, in conjunction with this is Anfield, on this show we, we we're just going to sort of talk about things in depth, uh, but do it a little bit differently. Uh, open to ideas on what the topic might be. Sometimes it might be more topical. It might be more newsy. Sometimes it might be stuff in the past or a question about, you know, what's the best strike you have seen or whatever it might be. So we're open-ended on this show. It's a little bit different to the Monday one. But do join us again on Monday, live at five on this channel. Uh, we hope you're enjoying these shows so far and do let us know either way. Nice one. Up the reds.